So moving on down to the, through our journey of the respiratory tract, the low respiratory tract, the bronchi and the subdivisions, they undergo 23 orders of branching. And this branching is referred to as the bronchial tree. And as they branch, they get the tubes get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the tips of the bronchial tree begin as conducting zone structures, and eventually they lead to the respiratory zone structures. So the conducting zone begins where the trachea divides to form the right and left primary bronchi, and those ten these are going to increase and increase as they get smaller, the number of them, but the diameter is going to decrease significantly. And as they in decrease in diameter, they're called bronchioles, less than one millimeter in diameter. And they finally end at the terminal bronchioles, which is the smallest of all the branches, less than a half a millimeter in diameter. And this is going to be the end of the conducting zone. So the conducting zone is going to end at the terminal bronchiole. We actually don't see it on this diagram because this is showing the different lobes of the lung. Notice the carina is where the trachea splits into the right primary bronchus and left primary bronchus. Then on the right side, we have three lobes. And on the left side, we have two lobes. And this is primarily because of the heart. So our next slide is continuing the conducting zone structures and into the respiratory zone structures. One very important point within the conducting zone structures is that they go from bronchi to bronchioles, and as this occurs, there's changes in the support structure. The cartilage rings are going to become irregular, and eventually they're replaced in the bronchioles altogether. The epithelium also changes from pseudostratified columnar, remember that's what was in the trachea, to cuboidal, and the cilia in the goblet cells become more sparse. So the amount of smooth muscle will increase as well. And this is very important because it refers to how the bronchioles can constrict or dilate due to different chemicals. So the respiratory zone structures. The respiratory zone begins where the terminal bronchioles end. So the terminal bronchioles are the last part of the conducting structure, the conducting zone. The respiratory bronchioles are the beginning of the respiratory zone, and they include the respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and then finally alveolar sacs, which end in the alveoli. And these are the sites of the gas exchange. And because gas exchange occurs, the structure in the alveolar wall would be simple squamous epithelium. So this slide is showing us the respiratory zone structures. So again, the terminal bronchial is the last part of the conducting zone. The respiratory bronchioles is the first part of the respiratory zone leading into the alveolar duct and eventually all the alveoli. Now, groups of alveoli together cluster to make the alveolar sac. So, the respiratory zone structures, we're going to look um, a little more in depth here now at the alveolar sac. We can see that all the alveoli are connected. And so, that means that there's blood vessels and nerves that are going to be surrounding all of them. The alveolar duct is where air leads into the alveoli, and the alveolar pores are small pores between the alveoli. So on the left, we see a micrograph of the respiratory bronchial leading into the alveolar sac. And when we zoom in on this image here, we can see that these are simple squamous epithelial cells, which again is very important because it's going to allow gas to easily go from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries, and that's called external respiration. So our next slide is showing the bronchi and the subdivisions, and the respiratory membrane 
It is going to be the blood air barrier that's consisting of the alveolar and capillary walls along with their basement membranes. And what's important about this is that it needs to stay very, very thin. And the more it thickens, the more likely there's a disease state that can occur. So the alveoli themselves, they, can, they have two different cells. They have a type 1 alveolar cell. It's made of simple squamous epithelium. And then there's type 2 alveolar cells, which are scattered. They're not, there's not as many of them as the type 1. And they're cuboidal in structure. And they secrete surfactant. Surfactant is a detergent-like molecule that helps to reduce surface tension. And as we saw in the previous diagram, the alveolar pores connect the adjacent alveoli. So that can equalize air pressure throughout the lungs. And then there's also alveolar macrophages. So macrophages to help to kill any bacteria or microbes that could be in the vicinity. So this slide is an excellent slide. It's showing, first of all, we see the smooth muscle of the bronchioles. And so this would be the terminal bronchiole, the end of the conducting zone. Respiratory bronchiole, beginning of the respiratory zone. And we see that there's pulmonary capillaries that are surrounding all of the alveoli. So you can see here there's a transition from blue to red, representing the fact that oxygen is diffusing from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries. So we now have oxygenated blood. And in this area is the alveoli and respiratory membrane. And as we zoom in on it, we can see all the simple squamous cells. So remember, there's mostly type 1 alveolar cells, but there's also type 2 alveolar cells, which secrete surfactant. And the membrane that's found between the alveolus and the pulmonary capillary is the respiratory membrane. And the four membranes, that, or the four layers that make up this membrane, would be first the alveolar epithelium, the two fused basement membranes, one for the alveolar epithelium, one for the pulmonary capillary endothelium, which we can see here. Again, this is where the external respiration is going to happen. Oxygen diffuses from the alveolus, crosses, diffuses into the blood, is transported on the red blood cell. So remember, if this membrane thickens, that makes it more difficult for this external respiration to happen. And it's more likely that there could be some sort of disease state in this case.